where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I believe there's freedom right where you're at right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Let's just trust the Lord right now for his help. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And thank you that, Lord, your precious Holy Spirit is with us right now. And where your spirit is, Lord, there's freedom, freedom in Jesus' name. We believe we receive it and we need your help, Lord. So we receive the help of the precious spirit of wisdom in our lives right now, helping us out to unfold the word of God and so that our lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name, amen. Why, oh why, part three. We're gonna be really zoning in on making your choices work for you. Isn't that exciting? When you ask why, oh why, you need to know that your choices can and should and will work for you. This is exciting and I believe, my friend, this is for you you right now. This is an on-time word from heaven for you. As I said at the very beginning of this series, until you ask the right questions, you don't get the right answers. Popular thinking produces many sad why oh whys. How's that, you ask? Because popular thinking is rarely, if ever, good thinking. Historically, popular thinking today is bad thinking tomorrow. Did you know that in the early 1900s, people believed radioactive products were good for them? Did you know that? Like, for example, radioactive cosmetics were supposed to be anti-aging. Oh, you got to get that lipstick, right? Some believe radioactive water was anti-aging. Now listen to this. This wealthy industrialist and champion golfer, Eben Byers, credited his health to drinking three bottles of radium water every day. He that was recommended by his doctors. When he died in 1932, the Wall Street Journal broke the news with this headline. Listen to this. The radium water worked fine until his jaw came off. That was the headline announcing his death. That's right. The lower half of Eben's face came off. He was rich believed he had the best health care. Imagine what his loved ones were thinking. Why, oh why? Why did Eben die? He was such a healthy man. This rich man died of a popular thinking choice. I know what you're thinking. That's jaw dropping. Ah, that was low hanging fruit. You're quick. Did you know that cigarettes were once thought to promote health and wellness? That's right. People were told that they could relieve colds, headaches, ward off diseases, and even relieve pain with cigarettes. Tobacco was known as the holy herb and God's remedy throughout all of Europe. It was considered very good for your teeth in India. So tobacco toothpaste was popular until it was banned in, guess what, 1992. That's right. And while all this went on for hundreds of years with terrible, deadly outcomes, how many people asked why, prayed, why God, why? A little deceit is deadly. Delayed understanding, my friend, is deadly. You're told something's right when it's wrong. You're told something's healthy when it's deadly. You're told something is the answer when it's not. It's a substitute for the answer. You're told a behavior is normal, approved when it has deadly consequences. This guy was a nice guy. Well, this woman was an amazing person. So why did this terrible thing happen here or that storm show up there or, or this earthquake here? You see, popular thinking in place of right thinking can be deadly. Jesus didn't come just to save us. He came to fix our thinking. Would it surprise you to know there's a lot of popular thinking among Christians that's just not true. For example, some think church is a building, that prayers are supercharged in this building called church. Jesus said, a little deceit leavens the whole lump. Everything can be answered in God's truth. The question is, will we take personal responsibility and choose to know, to trust in the truth? 
Ancient Rome has been considered the greatest empire of all time. Wealthy Roman aristocrats, they were said to drink the equivalent of three bottles of wine a day. In first through the third century, the elite class had access to an artificial sweetener that they used in their wine and their food called sapa. I think I'm pronouncing that right, sapa. It was made of grape syrup and lead. Yes, lead. If you were wealthy, you would sprinkle this on your food, use it to preserve and even sweeten your wine and live what you thought was the good life. Their firm belief was actually killing the wealthy elite. Because of the high toxicity, it produced nerve disorders, anemia, mental confusion, dementia, infertility, and eventually their vital organs would just shut down and they'd die. What do you suppose people thought as horrible symptoms showed up in their life? Why me? Why, oh why? Maybe even some prayed, why God, why? My friend, God does not want you ignorant or subject to worldly popular and broken thinking, not stupid thinking. Why? Because it's deadly. Jesus came to give us uncommon thinking, God class thinking. Why? So that we can take personal responsibility for our choices and align them with his truth, the truth, and that equals life. Hosea 4 verse 6 says this, my people are destroyed. This is God talking and he says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. God didn't say that you're destroyed because of a lack of love or because of a lack of likes on social media. It's not a lack of money. It's a lack of knowledge, knowledge of the truth, wrong thinking, common and popular thinking, my friend, will rob you of the truth and destroy your life. Sometimes it's slowly and other times it's a suddenly. Either way, it's jaw dropping. Get it? If you're discouraged, heartbroken, or confused, this message, why, oh, why, it's for you. This is for you. God wants to encourage you. If you don't feel like you belong, like you're always on the outside, God's truth is for you. God wants to bring you into the inside. In this series, I've used a funnel to illustrate how God's fundamentals work for you. Okay, watch this. Trusting the waters of your life to the funnel of God's fundamentals, it produces order, outcome, answers. When you're in the truth, God's way unites you. It makes you whole, it gives you identity and then energizes your purpose. He's a God of order. Look how being in reforms and it makes us belong. Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 13. He said, enter through the narrow gate, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the way that leads to destruction, to your life just being poured out for nothing. Look at all the options around the funnel. Look at them all. There's millions of options to pour your life out. And Jesus says they'll all lead to destruction. Just poured out for nothing. Being nice or a wonderful person doesn't eliminate the need for God's fundamentals. Jesus is on record telling us that the wide, spacious options other than the fundamentals lead to destruction. Your life just being poured out, wasted for nothing. We can ignore his fundamentals and say that, well, it'll all just work out somehow. But when it doesn't, does that make God complicit in a person's destruction? I don't think so. Mom and dad, your kids want to know why bad things happen to good people. Stick to God's fundamentals. Don't speculate on the facts, but point to the truth of God's word. Don't try to answer with observations, but rehearse God's principles. Never invent reasons or some secret sin. The disciples asked Jesus in John 9 about a blind man, assuming that he was blind because either his parents or he had sinned. Jesus said, neither. This was an opportunity to pour the man's life into the fundamentals and for God to be glorified through his, what was the outcome? Healing, healing. God's answers will always include the fundamentals to the big picture. Here it is. Truth gives birth to identity. 
Being in the truth moves you into God's family and identity determines purpose. The energy builds in this proper order to a life outcome, coming out, moving into the family of God, coming out into the promised land, into God's blessings, asking why from the inside, the fundamentals, it energizes movement toward joy, life, peace, all of his goodness. Never fear, never fear, never be in condemnation or in confusion. That's not God's will. I picked up this little bit of genius from our good friend, Pastor Stephanie Martinez, the other day. She said, if you invert the funnel, God's fundamentals, it makes a mess. Look at this. It just makes, it goes everywhere. I'm making a real mess here. It makes a mess. You may think you're working the funnel, but the tool, the order is upside down. You're making a mess. Sadly, some Christians invert God's funnel. Too many people justify pursuing their purpose, hoping that it'll evolve into an identity. Then they start talking about truth like it's a subjective thing. It will evolve, they think. They wonder why they're not free, but it's knowing the truth that makes you free. Having the purpose of a doctor doesn't give you an identity, and it sure doesn't evolve into a truth. Look at that mess. Being a mechanic or a rock star, it doesn't give you an identity that the gates of hell are powerless against. No, another mess. My friend, listen to this. Being a pastor with a huge congregation won't make the insecurity go away and suddenly make you feel like you've achieved identity. Now you're a somebody, now you're somebody. Oh no, you're not. You make a mess inverting the fundamentals. Now you put all the pressure to perform on other people, God's people, just because you've got the funnel upside down. How many people have asked why, oh why, when they see a leader fall? Truth is the foundation, not a byproduct of success in a career. You're making a mess and the kids are all going, why? Ask yourself this. Did Jesus come to save a church building or his body? In Mark chapter 13, Jesus' disciples, they're caught up and they're impressed with the fancy real estate. They said, wow, Jesus, look at how amazing this temple is. And look at that auditorium. Jesus challenges their religious common thinking by answering, you see this nice building? There will not be one stone left upon another. One day it'll all be torn down. He wasn't telling them that buildings were evil. He was saying, don't be distracted. Don't be misled. Don't substitute God's plans and thinking for man-made structures and substitutes. Jesus was saying, the truth is, I came to save you, not a building. I came to be torn down and built up again in three days. In parts one and two, we took back the term. The English word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, meaning a body of citizens raised up to administrate authority. What? How have we twisted the true meaning of church into a religious building that seems to always need the roof fixed? Jesus is the head of his church, his body of believers. Common thinking calls a building a church. People drive down the road and they say, well, hey, that's my church over there. And you know, that's not what Jesus meant when he told Peter, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to stand against it. That's in Matthew 16, 18. Jesus was pointing at Peter and the disciples. That's his body of believers, his ecclesia. The confusion over the English word church and the real meaning of ecclesia, it's a conflict of terms. Culturally, we may think popular consensus is right when it's actually deadly poison. Think of this. It's kind of like drinking radon water and thinking you look younger because your jaw fell off, right? First Timothy 1 verse 7. They have no understanding either of the words and terms they use or of the subjects about which they make such dogmatic assertions. That's the word of God. Robert Frost, the famous poet, once said this, half the world is composed of people who have something to say and can't, and the other half who have nothing to say and keep on saying it. Good quote. One fellow said this to the other, I'd agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong.
<laughs> Why substitute for the truth? We lose out on so much shifting our attention onto anything visible instead of onto God's invisible power. God gives power to his body of representatives, not to a tradition or to buildings. God specifically said his body is his church, not man-made structures. Substitutes don't work. And yet, the misplaced attention on brick and mortar keeps sincere people living outside and not coming inside. Jesus said in Mark 7, verse 13, you make the word of God of no effect with your traditions. What? Traditions are bad until they allow a short circuit of God's answers in your life. That's very wrong thinking. You're not working your funnel. Got to work the funnel. Imagine if Amazon needed you to come to their building to place your order. That's Sears, folks. That's Sears. What if you had to go to heaven to get your home delivery here on earth? Oh, wait, that's what Jesus did for us. Remember, God doesn't live in buildings, but in you. It's been reported that Iran has the fastest growing Christian movement in the world. Persecution against these brothers and sisters is extreme. Long prison terms are given to those who share their faith and public beatings for taking part in communion. Can you imagine? They're forced to meet secretly in small numbers in their homes. They may read God's word secretly, but they increase powerfully. They grow as the body of Christ because they've got God's presence living with them. Just think, the fastest growing church in the world and they don't need a building. Acts 17, verse 24. The God who is the Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands. This lie that God cares more about a building than you, it leads to terrible why oh whys. We were never called to seek first the religious assets. What's necessary? God says that you are. His great plans are for you, not for a building. You need access to God's glory, not a building. Access to his presence, not an institution, not an entity. Buildings don't heal or deliver. In the presence of the Lord is joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Choose to live, my friend, in God's presence. Not just once a week, but all the time. The choice is quite simple. If you ask why, oh, why, from outside of the fundamentals, from a place of faux spirituality based on form, tradition, buildings, designer morality, you've got no real foundation. We can see that. As the saying goes, you're writing checks that you just can't cash. I believe it was Dr. Phil that punctuated interviews with, so how's that working for you? Two plus two is five? Well, show me how that works. Show me the true results. What's the real outcome? See, don't give me results based on your confirmation bias or fantasy football league. Cowboys refer to that as all hat and no cows. Just a lot of big foolish talk. You can have the stuff, get the uniform, get in this club or in that team and still be out and not in. Steve Jobs, with all of his wealth and technical vision, he couldn't save himself or prolong his life. Heath Ledger, with all of his creativity and his good looks, he couldn't fill the void in his heart. Whitney Houston, what an award-winning voice, what great success, but she couldn't sing herself happy. She was unfulfilled. Aaron Hernandez, the football star in the top NFL league, commits murder and then suicide. There is no substitute for God's life funnel, the fundamentals. Everything else is just noise. Think about this. Pride is not interested in what the other person has to say, even if it's God. J.F. Kennedy, the famous president, once said this, we enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Recently, a good friend who gets encouragement regularly from this ministry was asked by his friend, is LRC, is Living Room Church a real church or an online church? 
<laughs> we both kind of smiled and laughed at the question because that's how Bible illiterate our society's perspective of Christianity is. They recognize a man-made structure is authentic, but the blessing power of God in a person's life is so abstract, unimportant, even eccentric and weird. God showing up in your home? Hmm, how strange that is. I've been in many beautiful buildings. Yes, some even called houses of worship, but none of those buildings ever compared to God's lavish blessings. His healing, His wisdom, His joy, His peace, His love. Life is a choice, my friend. We all get to choose. We all have to choose, consciously or not, but we all choose. Remember the Bible's fundamentals. Truth leads to identity. Identity determines your purpose. Let me tell you about the cuckoo bird. The common cuckoo bird is a con. It cons the warbler bird parents into raising its own chick from a hatchling. What the cuckoo bird does is it watches for when the warbler parents aren't looking, then it goes to its nest and it rolls out one of its eggs out of the nest to the swamp below, obviously killing the baby chick to be, and then replaces it with its own egg. It looks similar, but it's a little bigger. The cuckoo chick always hatches first and immediately throws the rest of the warbler real chicks into the swamp to their death. This sinister move tricks the warbler parents into unknowingly becoming foster parents to an imposter that grows to be four or five times one of the size of the adult warblers. Here's these war warbler parents feeding this chick that's like five times its size. They work around the clock trying to feed this insatiable parasite, which they totally believe is their offspring, their responsibility, their God-given purpose in life. In fact, as the imposter chick fills the nest to the full and overflowing, the warbler parents seem to interpret that as success, fulfilling their purpose. Look, we're doing good. This kid's really getting big. They serve and they serve and they serve and they give and they give and they give and then they sacrifice and they sacrifice and they sacrifice not knowing that the whole time they are just pawns in a con. Any religious substitute for God's order is a cuckoo bird con. I know so many good people that have given and given, served and served, and even sacrificed as they've invested themselves into religious ministries and organizations only to end up broken and confused after years, disheartened. As a child of God, you are a strategic part of Christ's body of envoys. Your assignment is anything but random. Jesus warned his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He was saying, watch out for the cuckoo bird con. Peter Drucker, famous author, management influencer, once said this, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. My friend, you're not called to be a warbler bird serving an imposter ideology. Choosing between the truth or a lie directly affects our why, oh why. From the beginning of humanity, the great deception has been to instinctively defer all responsibility for our choices. When Adam was confronted with his sin, he blamed God for giving him Eve. Well, then Eve turned around and blamed the serpent, and well, there was no one left, so he blamed all of us. I saw a cartoon one time of Adam and Eve in the garden, and she was eating a salad. Adam had this alarmed look on his face, and he exclaimed, Eve, that's not a salad. That's my dirty laundry. <laughs> Deferring responsibility is a huge con game. The system's to blame, so change it. Life's not fair. The world needs to change and adapt to me, to my dysphoria. Well, I should feel normal and accepted, so therefore I defer all responsibility onto society. I've been done wrong, so you owe me. Save me, pay me, and you better like my post at the same time. See, this con is just old sin. Cain deferred responsibility when he killed his brother Abel. Cain was a spiritual socialist. He didn't like God's system, so he tried to crash it in favor of choices that fit him better. He was pro-sin. He demanded equity at the expense of his brother's life. Not long ago, an 18-year-old mother, she was caught on security camera casually dumping a plastic bag into a dumpster. 
hours later, someone heard whimpering coming out of the trash. And when they rummaged through thinking that they might find an animal, they found a newborn baby boy, maybe just hours old. Paramedics were called and thank God the baby was saved. Now we might say, I'd never do that, but let's be honest, society does it all the time. An unborn baby's right to life is terminated in spite of scientific facts. In a sanitized way, we get to cast our vote for a candidate that best defers our responsibility for the fundamentals of life. Well, let the collective make these big, complicated life decisions. Surely they know best. The choice to defer responsibility sabotages your God-given authority to choose life and blessing. If we're not choosing life, what choice are we getting credit for? You see, too often people have believed that if something bad happens, it was somehow God's will. God wanted it to happen. If a person believes a lie, no matter how sincere or wonderful they are, their jaw falling off doesn't make it God's plan for their life. Just like sitting behind the wheel and refusing the choice to steer as you hit a tree doesn't make the accident go away. Deferred responsibility is still a choice. We get to choose to be in or stay out. God has given you the power to choose. Yes, you. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. God says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curses. Therefore, God says, choose life that you and your descendants may live. Think of that baby boy starting out life, deserted by his mom and left in the garbage. It's not fair. Can society reverse the curse for him? Well, how can it? It's a spiritual problem. The blessing is a gift from God. Someday he'll need to choose God's grace, just like we all do. Humanity is far past any original hurt. Hurt begets hurt, begets more hurt. As the saying goes, what doesn't get repaired gets repeated. Maybe you're deeply wounded is the question, who can I blame or who can heal the pain? You must take responsibility. Why? Because only you can give Jesus access. Only you. Why would you wait? Don't let popular thinking get in the way or delay God's plans for your life. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he made him, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Talk about taking responsibility for us. Jesus did. Still, you have to choose him. Jesus paid the price on the cross to bring you out of the dumpster of life and into the family of God. You can blame your mama, your daddy, everyone who's hurt you. But deferring your choice for life won't move your status into life. Taking responsibility and working your power of choice. Oh, but Pastor Stephen, they hurt me. They hurt me bad. I know they did. And I'm really sorry about that. I hate that that happened to you. But God wants you blessed. That requires you to choose his grace and come inside his love. Each one of us must make that choice for life to work God's fundamentals. We have to choose or they just don't work for us. Moses in the Bible, he had to take responsibility. So did David the psalmist. Rahab, she took responsibility. Ruth took responsibility. They all made their choice to come into God's powerful truth. The quintessential church building was never God's objective or his concern. It's always been you. It's always been you. You change the world when you're empowered. God is the source of that unfailing good power, but it's when he resides with you and in you. He works from within your life, your family, from within your assignment, and yes, from within your living room. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, For we are fellow workmen with and for God. You are God's garden his vineyard. You are God's field under cultivation. Listen to this. You are God's building. Christ in you is the divine plan. It's always been the divine plan. Your unstoppable 
in his truth, his fundamentals. Every why as a child of God releases more grace, more love, and more light. Oh God, why? Why do I have the honor of being in your family? Because you love me? Yes, you love me. Praise God, praise God. Do you want to make the spiritual quantum leap from out to in? Do you truly want to change your context from one of death to life so that every why question is from a place of unimaginable grace? God's eyes are on you right now in this second. And oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you and wants to bring you in, into his family through Jesus, his son. Touch heaven right now. Activate your faith and welcome God's gift of salvation. Pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I hear you at the door of my heart. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm now a child of God. You've answered all the why me's with your amazing grace and your unfailing love. I'm born again. I belong in the family of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.